For all the latest community news and events, 103.2 Preston FM. Your community, your radio. And you're with Chat City on this uh, Wednesday morning. Lovely to have you with us. Keep the uh, text coming in and uh, you can contact us. Not really the text, I mean the emails at studio at preston.fm, studio at preston.fm and you can tweet at Chat City PFM. I keep sending little tweets out throughout the show. So uh, a lovely way of keeping in touch with us here at Chat City and at Preston FM. And right now it's nice to welcome uh, my guest into the studio and it's Claire Jones and uh, Claire is from the Safe Place Centre Preston. So Claire, very good morning to good you. Morning, Huey. Lovely to meet you. And you. Tell us all about you're the co owner up there at the Safe Place Centre. Yes. Tell us about the Safe Place Centre then. Well, Safe Play, we're a venue for anybody who wants to come, but predominantly people with disabilities, um, for leisure and relaxation. And how long has the centre been open for then? We've been going for five years now, can hardly believe it, five years. Right, and how many children can you accommodate? Well, we people book out um, our premises privately and you have up to about 25 children at once and um, 20 carers or adults um, with them. But because people are so individual in their needs some people will come along and it will just be one child with the parents or it might be a support group will come along with the 25 children we are just so varied throughout the week so how did, how did it come about was this something that was missing in the market was this well a, a- yes most definitely um and i knew about that my background is children with autism I studied psychology at university and went on to do behavioural therapy with children with autism. So I knew that there was very little out there, um, particularly for children with autism, but in general for children with disabilities. Um, I also grew up with my brother being on the autistic spectrum. So it's very much my life, really, um, Mm. the the issue of um, autism. And once we opened, my husband and I had wanted to set it up for quite a long time, um, once we opened, we had three preschool children of our own. And when we realised that the facilities didn't need to just be used by children with, aut- um, with disabilities and autism, mm. it was open to everybody. So we wanted it to be an inclusive environment. And now we have lots of people without any disabilities coming on and just just using the facilities for relaxation and quality time together. Right. So it was a need that wasn't there in the market yes, at the time. Right. And ju- just before we... Uh, Continue, Claire. Where is it? Tell tell our listeners where you're situated. We are based in Roman Way Industrial Estate in Ribbleton. It's on the road um, to Longridge. Right. And some of the groups then that you've entertained over the year, there's been quite a mix. Most definitely. Um, I've talked about children with disabilities and able-bodied children, but we have a lot of adults as well with learning disabilities who come along because in lots of ways they're sort of the, the secret group of the community who... Um, People don't always realise that there are a lot of adults out there who need places to go, to relax, to have fun, and there's such little availability out there. Mm. Um, so we do have a lot of adults that visit as well. So for the different groups, when they come along, what what's available or what usually are the kind of activities or what takes place? We have a sensory room and a soft play area, but we're not soft play like other soft play areas out there. We don't have tall climbing structures with netting and things like that it's all Mm. open plan so um whoever is in there can be supervised at all times and they have an open space to be able to go and enjoy themselves in whatever way they see fit right and people uh, i take it make contact with you by email by phone and various ways of getting in touch yes we try to get out there as much as possible because even though we're five years old now we still find a lot of people out there still haven't heard about us and Mm. would really benefit from our service so it's still getting the word out there so facebook twitter email phone that's right and and during the year do you sometimes put on various events etc We've done, we had um, a fantastic family fun day last, um, when was it, summer, August time, where we teamed up with the Prince's Trust and we had um, a wide variety of people come along to that, children with disabilities and um, mums with new babies and all sorts of um, groups from the community and it was a fantastic day. Right. And uh, you, you, you're open, what are the kind of hours and days that you're open? Well, we're open nine till nine daily um, on a pre book basis. People can come and drop in and play on a Monday afternoon and a Wednesday morning, but the rest of the time people book us out privately. 
So is it is it mainly local people? Or are you getting people from across Preston and uh, the wider the area? West. Is that right? Yeah, um, we have people coming from Cumbria, believe it or not. Yes. Um, every Saturday night, a, a residential group come from Cumbria. Um, people, a lot of uh, people from East Lanks, Chorley Way, um, Blackpool, and Thornton Way. So all the way around the northwest, because there's such little provision out there for for this. Right. So y- you're a residential provision. Um, yes, we we have w- people can't stay with us, but we don't provide um, supervision for anybody that comes to use Safe Play. Um, people come along with their own carers or families or support workers, um, but anybody can come along and um, use the venue. So we get lots of different residential care units coming along for their um, community access groups and um, leisure. Some of them like to set up um, the music as a kind of disco, so in the evening you can have it as a, a social event, um, like I say, all the way around from the northwest. Right. And uh, any any plans for 2014? Anything you'd like to look at or achieve in well, 2014 that you'd do differently? Last 2013 was a very busy year for us. We <laughs> Is were that right? In, um, we won the North West um, final for a local business competition went down to london and met deborah meadon for that which was this, amazing this is, this is what i was reading and this is what i was right. uh, meaning okay. to talk okay. to you about so tell us all about that well that was super that was a competition <laughs> through Lovely. the lancashire evening post um and we won the local and the regional rounds and went through to be one of the 15 um finalists in london so we went down to london for the day um, unfortunately, didn't win that one, um, but we were um, crowned as the Northwest winners, which was fantastic. So, was that that like? Um, w- was it for being kind of innovative in your yes. business and being different yes. and what you were achieving? Is that what that was about? Yes, it was about lo- uh, recognizing local businesses and showing how local businesses can go further if they want to grow. And that's very much something that we hope to do in the future, to grow and be able to open more safe plays around Lancashire. Right. So you've been going now, did you say, five years? Yes, five years. And and seeing the growth within that five yes. years? Yes, that's right, yes. I've, well, as I said, when we first opened, we thought it was about children with disabilities and soon realised it was about children of all abilities mm. and then quickly realised it was about adults with disabilities too. So there's so many people out there in different sectors of the community um, who will come and use us um, there's a definite need for it all the way around Lancashire right and uh, and it's interesting to talk about something that's different isn't it and mm. when that need is there mm. and and wh- why do you think it is then you were saying earlier that um, you've been around for five years and yet somehow people still still or some people don't know that you were there well because we're hidden away on an industrial estate we, we haven't got anybody driving by really um, ah, and seeing yes, us yeah. Um, and I also think that um, people who work with people with disabilities, you, it's very easy to get used to the fact that there isn't very much out there to do. Um, I see, still see people walking around supermarkets as their daily trip, taking out adults as with their day out. And I, I feel that's really, it's an important part of um, learning and independence. Mm, yeah, I agree. But I, I don't feel that that should be a leisure um, or a relaxation um thing for the, for people to do i think that's wrong and there are things out there i mean the world of disability is becoming more known about now i, I think mm. um, there's lots of things popping up um that people can do horse riding and trampolining and all sorts of things and i think it's becoming a bit more accepted in the community it's not like it was even 10 years ago yes, i, I, I think really um, which is absolutely fantastic but i strongly believe in um Inclusion. I think that the whole community should strive to understand about disability and things shouldn't just be for people who are able and people who have disabilities. I, I believe that, um, like Safe Play is an inclusive environment, anybody can come along. You don't mm. have to fit into one box. Right. And are, are you able to uh, cater for people in wheelchairs and yes, people who have fully, uh, Yes, we're ability. wheelchair accessible. Yeah. We have... Um, um, a tracking hoist on the ceiling so people in wheelchairs can come out and access the ball pool and the soft pads and the interactive equipment and we have um, a portable hoist as well for people to come out in the sensory room and be able to enjoy the equipment in there as well. So so when, say, somebody makes contact with your group, do you then kind of talk about what will be on offer and how what will be available if they come along? 
usually well we offer out a free trial session for any groups with disabilities that want to come and try us out um just getting out of the house for some people can be, you know, quite a, a mammoth task. Mm, yes. um, and you don't want to go along and spend your money and realise that it's not suitable for you. So that's why we do that. And we find it's better if people come and see what we're about rather than me talking to somebody on the phone what they're about because I can say, oh, we've got all interactive equipment and we've got the hoists and you can come in and use facilities as you wish. But I think until you actually see something with your eyes when you know the individual needs of the person that you're caring for, it's very difficult. So that's why we encourage people to come along, book a, an initial visit to come and see what we can offer. Which is a, a nice way of doing that, yes, isn't it? Then yes. you're able to, it's a kind of taster in a way, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, yes, which is important. For and people to I, have I would imagine you probably do get to uh, repeat Yes, we, oh, and we people do. People coming back time and time again. The majority of our week is taken up with um, schools and residential care and individuals with disabilities who use their direct payments to come along to us, and they come week after week after. We're booked right into 2015. Week after week after week, they come because it's part of their routine of their timetable for the week, and it's a very important part for that. Right, and uh, for people so they can find out more, where's that? Where is the best place to look? Well, probably our website, um, which is www.safeplacecentre.co.uk. That has all the information on there and our phone number and email. But I would just encourage anybody to phone us up, speak to myself or my husband, Rob, and um, just have a chat to us and see how we can help you. So are you going to be uh, putting forward for the award again this year? Um, I don't know. I, I've not, um, I, I'm not sure if the LEP are doing that again at the moment I've not seen oh, it right. it was coming out February last time so I certainly will be having a look yeah. it was an exciting day I have to say going down to London and it was thrilling to be recognised for, for what we've done in the local community I was really pleased about that and that is what is really nice isn't it to be recognised yes. for and, yes, uh, and but also that that facility is available and to be able to get that information across yes. to the wider public that yes. there is such a facility absolutely. in Preston yes absolutely because I know uh, presenting this programme every morning I'm just amazed at the things that are available in Preston sometimes it, it just needs that extra publicity for people exactly. to find out about it Preston is a great place to live there's loads of um, different facilities and things out there for people and it is like you say just getting the word out there so people know what's available to them and I'm just reading Reading from somebody who has been along and they said had an amazing time in safe play today absolutely loved it never been or talking about someone that they were with and it says never seen her so excited <gasps> running on the spot squealing priceless <laughs> oh. thank you for a great play date we will be back oh, and that must be lovely to see yes it is it's, it's very very rewarding um we one of the schools that come in with us weekly have very challenging children and one um, young man in particular I can think of uh, mid-teens and he didn't like to go into the main soft play area with all the loud music in there and the lighting and um, so we worked with the school to try and encourage him to go and he used to just stay in the foyer stay for five minutes and then go back on on the bus um, but over several weeks, we worked with, the, like I say, with the teachers and moving forward, changed the music and the lighting and um, the setup. And in the end, he was in there with his peers um, for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, <laughs> enjoying it. And that was just so rewarding, so amazing and brilliant for the young man who achieved that. And they're in the nice stories, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah, definitely. It makes it all worthwhile. So you can cater for all ages and disabilities? Yes, absolutely. We do get a lot of challenging um, adults and children who come along. Because we have the open space, um, it just allows the person to be free and not... To, we have lots of children who come with two-to-one care. Mm. Um, and it must be very restrictive to have somebody so close to you all the time. Well, they can come in and they can just be free for the the time that they're there um, and enjoy themselves and that's really important and what about costings for anybody who wants to come along costings it's 48 pounds to um, to hire privately for the hour and that's up to 25 children if if necessary up to 25 yeah. right and we also do parties at the weekend um for anybody who wants to come along we get a lot of mums with preschoolers who want to have the facility of having a party where it's just yourself and your friends and your family and no other strangers coming in and they bring their own food and they set it up and they have whatever music they want so we do lots of those at the weekend and they're 85 pounds for two hours and again the space 
Yes, yes. Which must be nice. Yes, absolutely. So again, Claire, just tell us where people can find out all about you. Well, if they um, go online to www.safeplaycentre.co.uk, all the information's on there. Lovely. Well, can I thank you for coming in this morning and telling us all about Safe Play Centre Preston? Thank you, Huey. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed today's interview, why not tweet Huey at ChatCityPFM?